Hello and welcome. Um, you are joining Data Robots Women's History Month LinkedIn Live session, so thank you. Um, I'm gonna be joined by a few of my colleagues you can see here today. We're gonna talk about what makes up an inclusive culture, the changes we're making at Data Robot, what we're seeing in the workforce, and how we're building up women in AI across the industry. My name is Jennifer Hewlett. I joined Data Robot about nine months ago, and I lead marketing. Everything we do in marketing is about driving growth for our business, and about delivering value for our customers and our partners. And the team I lead globally is globally distributed. We have talent all over the world, and that includes in the Ukraine. So what you'll see today is together with my colleagues, we're wearing blue and yellow. We stand in spirit with the talented, strong, and resilient team that we have. We are with you. So with that, I'd love to just dive in and talk about women in AI. I'll be your host today, and I'm gonna be joined by this amazing panel. First, you'll hear from Frankie, our Director of Employee Experience and Development. You'll hear from Edna, our VP of Global Talent, and you'll hear from Belin Sanchez Hidalgo, Senior Data Scientist and Team Lead. So I'm gonna start with Frankie and, and really just jump in. Please feel free to chime in in the chat if you have questions for any of us but we'll get started with Frankie. All right, first question. We just recently had an internal session at Data Robot this week. It was really well received, so many great ideas and insights. And the theme on International Women's Day was break the bias. It was a great way to really kick off the week, this, this International Women's History Month, but also I think a great way to start the session. Frankie, would you mind sharing just a little bit of what you're up to in your role and what we shared with the team earlier this week? Absolutely. I joined Data Robot about six months ago, so also fairly new, but I have been amazed at the uh, the level of you know, passion and engagement. And the panel that we hosted earlier this week was really about women sharing their stories about you know how, how they've experienced um, career growth and, and energy. In my role, I have an opportunity to think about how do we want to develop our culture? We want a culture where people feel like they belong, where they're in, they feel inspired to engage and that they're empowered to grow. So really driving the efforts of our diversity, equity and inclusion and belonging work, employee engagement and our learning and development. In this role, I've really had an opportunity, uh, Jennifer, to experience uh, amazing people. I think one of my favorite things we've done recently is launched our Living Our Values Awards, which gives us an opportunity to recognize those values in action. And through just reading through some of the submissions, I feel so proud to work with such amazing people um, who show up each day authentically, who dream big, and are, are just driven to do amazing work. And I'll give a shout out to Baylin on this call, who was one of our first uh, Living Our Values Awards winners, which she'll talk more about uh, some of the work she's doing and what, you know why she received that. Uh, additionally, like I mentioned, we've really started to launch our Belong initiatives, which is a collection of work that will drive our efforts to attract and retain top talent, build employee communities, and create opportunities to educate and inspire. We know that diversity is just numbers. It's, you know, if you focus on diversity, you might get some numbers, but the real goal is to focus on inclusion and create a, a culture where people feel like they belong. And I think we're doing that at Data Robot. Um, I know Anna and, and team are putting a lot of work into this and I'm excited to, for them to share as well. That's awesome. Well, and you know, building on that and, um, and the groundwork that you've seen and, and some of the conversations you've been having that have been shaping the direction that we're heading what are you hearing from women in tech? What kinds of things are they looking for in culture and how are we supporting them and each other to thrive in the workplace? It's a great question. You know, when I think about women, I mean, I, I obviously am a woman and I'm speaking from, from my perspective, but I think in general, women are looking for an opportunity to apply their skills in meaningful ways and to be stretched and have opportunities to grow. Um, and most importantly, wanting to be recognized for that impact, right? When we look at um, the ability to come in and do and do work each day in organizations like ours, we also have to be able to balance our personal and professional demands. Uh, but it's important for us to look at the makeup of the of the um, of the um, makeup of the women today. That we we're seeing that women across workforces 
make up about 50% of that workforce, but only 35% are in top management positions. And so I think people, you know, there's an opportunity here for us to really think about how do we help women thrive and how do we help them achieve higher levels in the organization? Because we know that when you have more diverse uh, organizations, more diverse leadership uh, uh, panels, more diverse board of directors, et cetera, it matters. The, the level of uh, innovation, creativity increases, business impact across the board, the, the data shows um, goes up when you have diversity at those levels. So I think women want a seat at the table and they want to be recognized, but they don't want to be a token, right? They want to be somebody who is there because they've earned the right to be there and, um, and, and feel like they can add value. And Absolutely. I know you're doing a lot of work here. I, I, I know you probably have more here. Well, you're, um, we are, we are very lucky to be in a position where we can deliver a tremendous amount of impact and who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want mm -hmm. the chance to really, um, shape something big, make great things happen and do it together with great teams. And I think that's something that I'm seeing and really embracing since I've had the chance to step in and um, lead at Data Robot. Um, Edna, I would love to, to shift over to you for a minute, if, if you don't mind, just sort of building on um, this, this topic with what Frankie shared. Would you introduce yourself, your role, and some of the things that you see when you're recruiting to build the teams that are really going to take us into the future. Yeah, no, that would be great. Um, so my team, so I run um, Global Talents for Data Robot. So my team is worldwide, and so we support all the functions across Data Robot, including Ukraine. And um, so what we're seeing, the change of industry these days are, you know, back in the 90s when I was with the NBA, it was all male dominant world, 99%. And going into the studios, they were probably way ahead on the DNI than um, other industries. So there are a lot of female leaders, there's a lot of females that are executives. And then going to the 90s in the dot com era, we had probably mostly, again, male. I was with software companies and um, services company. Most of the leaderships are male, and females were in the support staff role for the most part. Now, fast forward to where we are today, this world has changed completely. So we have, and looking at Data Robot, looking at what we have changed over the last two years, I've been with Data Robot a couple of years, and what we have changed, we have, we have um, executive leadership that is female, we have board of directors are female, very accomplished, there's CRO driving revenue, there are females, um, you know, head of the special interest group, female. So there's a lot of female out there. And so kind of going what, before I go to what, what I think women are looking for, just our team at Data Robot, I can only speak for my team in, in, in the broader base is that, you know, I have a lot of moms on my team, a lot of female, great male females on my team. And, but we know we help each other out. We take care of each other, right? So we're a global team. So, well, if someone has a track meet with the kids, We'll step in in different time zone, and this happens all the time. And it's not just track meets or duties. It's even, hey, you've had a long week. You go get your nails done. I'll cover for you, you know, for for some of the openings or, or interviews or, or something like that, right? So we work really hard, but we help each other out. And and that's male and female, you know, to help mom, especially mom coming in. So what, what are women looking for, you know, coming back in the business from what I see is, we're definitely looking for flexible work culture. We're looking for balance, work-life work balance. We want equal pay, right? We want to have an opportunity to, to get leadership role. We want to have a voice. We want to make changes in the work environment and outside in the world. And, you know, we want to have a meaningful job and we don't want to be called emotional. So, you know, I think some of these are really core of what women are looking for and um, we welcome you know, all diverse candidates to come join us at Data Robot, there's a place for everybody. Thank you for that. And I think, um, you know, the team culture of supporting each other and winning together as a team is something that really stands out and something I've really valued since I've, I've joined um, just in the last nine months. Um, so thanks for hitting on that. I, you hit on another point that I'd really like to just tease out a bit more, which is, you know, for women that are um, maybe have taken some time off that are thinking about or considering getting back into the workforce. And it could be pandemic related. It could be this big transition that we're seeing across companies all around the globe. Um, post pandemic, 
It could also be these life moments, like um, taking some time to start a family and deciding whether to go back into the workforce again at any stage along that journey, right? At the beginning, when kids hit high school, when they go off to college, it could be anywhere in that spectrum. When you see that, um, what are you experiencing? What are you hearing, learning um, from women that are actually considering exactly that? And um, as you encourage women to take that step and get back into the workforce because there's so much they can contribute. Absolutely. So a lot of companies outside, out, out there right now have these return programs where they train, they help you know, mo- mentor and motivate um, female coming back. So I think what I would suggest is, and I'm a, a mother of twins and I have teenagers, I have a nine-year-old mom, so I know exactly what everyone's going through. And I have kids that have five different sports games every three days, right? So I, I know we what we are dealing with here. What I would tell women is lean in. You can do it. Just lean back in. Because what people don't recognize is you've got serious project management skills at home. Mm-hmm. You are probably trained um, every day on prioritizing different tasks. And you're probably really good at social media and you know, and and have an eye for marketing and things that, you know, that is really core skills here coming back to work. You know, what some of the best people that are on my team and a data robot is they are efficient. They can multitask. They know how to prioritize. They have very good people skills. They can work with others. I mean, those are core skills. What we look for here and, and for men and women at data robot is we experience is great, right? Experience is great coming from a, a competitor, transitioning right in to sell something or, or, or programmer, it's great. But that's not what we look for. We look for someone with very strong EQ. We look for someone that have strong character, right? People that are honest, people that work hard, people that you know, are okay to learn new technology, learn new process, method, and not kind of stuck with, hey, I did it this way the last 10 years. This is how I like to be, you know, have it done. We look for people that are willing to change and be flexible, learn new um, tricks, learn new technology. I spoke with one of our VP engineering earlier, and he even said, hey, you know, Edna, we want to bring people back, mom back, even you know, developers. Even if we missed it, if the person missed it for a couple of years, it's not that difficult to come back. Because everyone coming to Data Robots is going to learn Data Robot tools anyway. So we're just on the same um, learning path. I think I think that's such an important point, Anna, because I think with how quickly things are changing, you need a mindset, which is to always be learning, always be leaning in to actually learn the new skill or learn the new way to do things or learn new ways to communicate or learn how to have a live stream and manage a dog that might open the door behind you because that is what's happening. We are always adapting, we're always learning, we're always growing. And I think that is such an important skill to to really vet out in the interview process. And, you know, that trumping a little bit, what you're saying is is don't rely and and believe that experience alone is what matters most. Really these core skills are so, so important. Um, Agree wholeheartedly with you on that one. And I think that's a, a really excellent transition over to Berlin. Um, and, and maybe Belen, this is a great place. You have such an interesting story. Um, you've really opened doors to many other women. I'm so inspired by you. Congratulations again on the award that you received last month for living our values, but really getting specific with data science. That may sound a bit out there. Like maybe people might count themselves out of that category, but actually they should count themselves in. And I think you have an amazing story to share and a great program to share with the team as well. Would you mind? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Jennifer, for all those kind words. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think, you know, there's so many things we can do. And as Edna and as Frankie have highlighted, building inclusive cultures is so important. Ensuring that we have equal rewarding systems based on gender, also very important. I think there's one area that I particularly, particularly feel very passionate about, which is education and providing more access, more easy access towards um, AI, data science skills. Um, And I think the roots of that, of this passion that I had is because I made it myself, right? Like four four years ago, I was uh, over a decade working on innovation and tech policy. I was not a data scientist, but I was reading more and more about 
algorithms and robots are coming, right? And then there's a particular day that changed my career where my husband sent me this picture of one of these Amazon bots doing deliveries in Washington, D.C. And he he wrote, um, robots are coming. I'm like, they're here. I quit my job. I signed up in a data science bootcamp. And I was like, I'm going to learn this. I need to learn it. Um, and in, a, in, in in a period of like 12 weeks, through this immersed process, I became a data scientist. And a year and a half later, I was joining a data robot. Now, the lesson from there that I got was like, wow, there's more paths nowadays available in order to learn these technical skills in a shorter term. And when I joined data robot, I was even more surprised to understand how automation was even reducing that gap in terms of how long does it take to learn these skills uh, because automation is really helping us to democratize ai in such a powerful way um, so right when i realized that and i through the pandemic gathered the passion and strength to start doing something about it um, i was lucky to find a team of people within data robot that were also passionate about this but then also a team uh, in a women in AI, which is an international organization that works with a community of AI professionals. And we decided to do something and to tackle this challenge together. Uh, and after several months of working together, we were able to launch YCAMP by Data Robot University, uh, YCAMP, which stands for Women in AI Camp. Um, it is a seven week course uh, that we developed in Spanish targeted to women uh, in Latin America. Uh, and after launching it, we were able to grant 60 scholarships to women from Latin America living across 11 different countries. And they were able to go through this seven week training in order to learn what is AI and how to apply data science to real industry problems from preventing client churn to forecasting sales in a retailer. Um, and those skills that they uh, acquire in this period of time are helping, are helping them right now to grow internally in organizations where they were already working. Others were taking the course because they had lost uh, their job through the pandemic and they were trying to reskill themselves and it was a great opportunity. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot when it comes to education and building technical skills. And I think, as I said before, automation is just helping us to acquire the, those skills in, in a better way, in a faster way. Amazing. Amazing. See why she got an award for the work that she's doing. I, and, and it wasn't because of you know, the word was didn't even exist when this work happened. But I, I watch you, Bailey, and tell your story. And I just am inspired every day because you saw a need, you saw something and you leaned in and you brought it to life and you, you used your resources, got other people involved. And I just you're one of the reasons why I appreciate being here every single day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. It's, it's just tremendous work. And I, I can imagine that there may be some people listening today that are thinking, how could I get started? Or how could I share this information with someone else with someone else that I know that could be exactly this kind of candidate, right? Someone who would love to, to reskill, upskill, new skill themselves. Um, how could someone get started? And I think we shared a link uh, out to the group uh, with more information. Um, so um, please do check that out. Um, and also, I, I think one other point, something that I think is really um, important to inclusive cultures is that everyone on the team is a leader. Uh, and, and this is an example where, you know, Galen just took the lead, made something happen, um, brought people together and had a tremendous impact. Um, so, again, props to you on that one. Uh, just shifting gears a little bit, we have a couple of, of more general questions and, and I'll throw this first one out. Um, to the group around how do you know you're make, you're you're having success with building this inclusive, more inclusive culture? How how what do we measure? How do we approach this with a, an element of science back to where we started that tells us we're doing the right things to to build a more inclusive, diverse workforce that we would like to? Are there any things that we're looking at specifically? Any thoughts that you have um, across the group? in your space uh, that you're looking at for measures or indicators that we're on the right path. I can jump on that a little bit on what, what are we doing internally, um, you know, for our talent team and, and actually all hiring managers and executives at DataRobot, we're 
catching a wider net. So we are much more prone to looking at, hey, let's not just look at the set of profiles or the set of um, candidates. Let's just catch a much wider net. We look at outside industry. We look at different background. And so um, you can't really do all of that all at once for different group. We try to measure, okay, which group are we kind of under, um, you know, performing with diversity and, and which ones aren't. So and I think for our team specifically, it's we've been really lucky to be able to work with our high managers, our executives, They're all really, really um, supportive of, hey, you know, I, I even have high managers, um, RVP, ZP coming to us all the time. And we, we need to really get a few more, um, you know, better candidates, look at diversity candidates um, in the pool of the final interviews, you know, things like that. So we're trying to put some process and measures to look at, hey, are we, tapping all the places, right? So the team will know that it's not just, hey, cookie cutter, we, we wanna make sure we're um, people that are in front of the final stages have a diverse um, background. Um, I think we also um, kind of, you know, we do metrics, we do understand um, where we're short. So like for data robot, we're probably focusing more on sales and engineering at this time. We know you're successful when you start seeing great Leader, uh, female leaders promotions, and and which we've had a um, number of them over the course, and you've seen that uh, female um, uh, diversity candidates referring more diverse candidates. When you start seeing these numbers coming up, like we have been the last few months, then you know you're probably in the right path. So we're really proud of that. Yeah. I'll add in to that as well. I think you know once you once you have recruited the the, the uh, women into the organization, you know, I think it's important for us to really think about our employee engagement. What does that look like? And so recently we just launched an employee engagement survey, and we're we're diving into the uh, the metrics and analyzing you know the, the results. But I think it's really important for companies to do this and to understand you know what what are those levers that the drive engagement and what are the experiences for women that might differ from men and for certain regions and, and, and ethnicity. So when you think about it from a diversity perspective, you could cut that data in many, in many different ways. So having tools and resources to do that is, is really important. Uh, but we're definitely as an organization taking time to really look at those experiences and being able to set goals for, in, for improving the experiences across the board. Okay. Uh, let's see if I am back. You are back. Yeah. Okay. Back. Wonderful. It, it, I, I saw a little pop up that said my, I've been muted and um, that is probably the puppy that's about to come in the door behind me. So thank you all for bearing with me. Um, you know, something, um, something I, I try to do with purpose, just sharing a little bit from my perspective again, sorry for the background noise. Um, you know, I really, um, I really am purposeful in mentorship and, and sponsorship. Um, and uh, I had a valuable resource um, that uh, gave me some, some insights, some thoughts and some guidance uh, back a couple of years when I wanted to be more purposeful in the time I spent with individuals supporting their goals um, in the role that I was in. And that is um, through multiplydiversity.com. And really, I took a pledge um, to actually sponsor three individuals and a pledge to mentor three individuals. And with that pledge, I um, committed to sticking with them through achieving their next goal career wise. And I found that the um, resources that were made available gave me just some very concrete and tangible ideas around how to go about that. And I, I give that as an example because within my own space, it was a way that I could take concrete action in a specified time with a number that I could measure myself against, which is something I like. I like. Um, I like to drive, which is accountability. Um, so I just share that as something out for the group that um, I offer up in case it's useful to anyone else who would like to sponsor someone, mentor someone, or really just learn about um, about multiplying diversity and some different ways to get specific and what we can do together. Um, but Lynn, was there anything that, that you wanted to add um, there? Or I could go to the final question before we, we wrap up. I think just a small comment. Um, I think this concept of building inclusive cultures has to be 
grounded on very tangible initiatives. And I think the reason I am two years and a half in this company and that I've been growing in my career is exactly because Data Robot has surrounded me in a very tangible way with a ecosystem of support like by helping me identify a mentor that is the best one, uh, a coach, uh, being able to provide a spaces like Dream Big to have a weekend to think about where do I want to be in the next 20, 10, five years and build, a plan, build, and build a plan around it. And then also once I had an idea like Y Camp and I start pitching it to find the support and the resources to make it a reality. Uh, and I think that speaks to this commitment, but also tangible resources and actions that a company can make in order to help uh, not only women, but like a diverse workflow, a uh, workforce flourish. Amazing. Awesome. So I think I think we're reaching the end of the 30 minute segment that we had today. So I'm gonna go around and ask, ask um, each of my colleagues if there's one closing thought uh, to, to wrap today or one piece of advice you would maybe give to your younger self um, as we wrap up our time together. So either either way, either direction. I'd be happy to jump in and, and share something that's resonating with me uh, through this conversation and something that was shared um, internally through one of our diversity panels. Actually, it was a fireside chat last month as part of Black History Month. Uh, I think Jim Cash, one of our board members, shared the idea of, you know, it's easier to act your way into a new way of thinking versus thinking your way into a new way of action. And I think it's those. I think we may have, um, we're going to flex our agility muscle. And I think we're going to, we're gonna, I'm going to go to Edna and see if there's any, Edna, if there are any closing thoughts that you have. And we may get Frankie back here in a minute, but um, would that be all right, Edna, if I turned it over to you? Absolutely. Um, I think, like I said earlier, right, just lean in, lean back in, you can do it. And and I, I've been given this advice when I was much younger, um, when I was thinking about, can I, should I switch another job? Would they like me? You know, someone said to me, and then some people talk about it, some people just do it. So you should just do it. And I think that helped me with my career. And I would suggest the same thing. You know, some people talk about it, some people just do it. So you should just do it. I love that. I love that. Belen, are there any closing thoughts that you have today before we wrap? I think my invitation will be to don't be afraid to learn technical more technical things. I think it's easier nowadays. It's more digestible <laughs> if you want. Uh, so just don't be afraid to learn it. I think diversity in the technical space um, can benefit us as a society in so many different ways. But just don't be afraid. Take that step. There's resources. Let us know if you want to do it. We're here to help for sure. That's awesome, Belen. Thank you for that. And I'll, I'll wrap us up with just you know a final thought, which is you know, enjoy the journey, but enjoy this moment, the present, you know, that you're exactly in. Like now is the time, you know, often we're thinking about far into the future. Why not now? Why not take that step now and um, take action and really enjoy what's right in front of you, the potential that you have um, and the potential to really make an impact. Um, I think it's a, it's a perfect time too. I always love that phrase. You know, they, they say the present is a gift. Um, that's why we call it the present. Um, so I've always been a fan of that. And um, and I do think that at Data Robot, we're in a unique position to really drive uh, more inclusive and more intelligent tomorrow. And we look forward to doing that together with all of you. 